In this video, I'll show you how to make an artificial robotic skin that can detect when it's stretched. The skin is made from silicone rubber that's stretchy and flexible just like human skin, but inside it has strips of embedded conductive fabric. The electrical resistance of these strips changes when you pull on them, and that change can be measured by a microcontroller to control something like the LEDs you see here, or even a motor. Here's a piece of the conductive fabric connected to a multimeter to measure its resistance. You can see that when I stretch it, its resistance goes down, and this might seem counterintuitive if you've taken a physics class, because there you learned that if a material gets longer and skinnier, its resistance goes up because it's harder for electrons to flow through it. However, that's for a solid chunk of material. The fabric isn't solid, it's made from many little fibers woven together, and when I pull it tightly, these fibers press together more tightly, decreasing the overall resistance. Now, since this fabric is conductive, we can't use it directly on the outer layer of a robot because that would make it vulnerable to short circuits. That's why we're going to embed it in the electrically insulating silicone to protect it. This makes it kind of like your skin, which has a protective outer layer and nerve endings underneath that can detect touch. As for the silicone, you can find a complete materials list linked in the description of this video. I am going to use Ecoflex 0030, which comes as a two-part mixture, parts A and B, which are both liquid. You mix equal volumes of those in a cup and stir for three minutes, and then I'm going to pour them into a container or tray to form the bottom layer of the skin. This is going to take four hours to solidify, so I'm just going to let it sit out at room temperature and not touch it until it's solid. Then we're going to come back and put in the layer of conductive fabric before mixing another batch of silicone and pouring it on top to form the top layer. So the exact thickness of this bottom layer is not critical. You're going to need enough to cover the entire bottom surface of your pan, ideally at least a few millimeters thick because you don't want it to be so thin that it tears when you pull on it or that it doesn't completely cover the conductive fabric and some of the fabric remains exposed but you don't want it to be too thick because then it's going to be harder to pull on the conductive fabric and the silicone isn't going to be as flexible. So this is something you can experiment with if you're doing this for a science project, trying different thicknesses of the silicone, but I am just going to eyeball it. You can see maybe I didn't mix quite enough there. It didn't spread out to cover the whole tray, so I'm going to add a little more just to make sure it covers the bottom of the entire tray in a layer a few millimeters thick. While that silicone is curing, let's talk about the conductive fabric, because there are a lot of different types of this fabric online, marketed for different purposes. You have to be a little careful because there are some pseudoscientific claims about EMF, or electromagnetic field shielding and human health, but that's really a topic for another video. We're not going to get into that here, because for our purposes, these materials do work for this project. You just have to make sure you get one that is stretchy. So see how this fabric here is very stretchy if I pull on it. And this sheet, while it is flexible, it's more like a piece of paper. It doesn't really stretch when I pull on it, so this isn't gonna work very well for a stretchy sensor. So again, we will put a link to the fabric we purchased in the description of this video, but there are many different types available online. Before you buy something, you might wanna contact the seller just to clarify the properties of the material in case it's not obvious just from the pictures. Also note, that even the stretchy fabrics may be more stretchy in one direction than another. So you can see if I pull on this one like this, it is pretty stretchy in that direction. But if I rotate it 90 degrees and pull, it's really not as stretchy. So this is going to depend on how the individual fibers are woven together. But when you cut these strips for your sensor, you're going to want to, want to cut in the stretchy direction so you can take advantage of that stretch. The exact dimensions of the strips are not critical. Again, maybe that's something you can experiment with if you're doing a science project. I started out with strips that are roughly one centimeter long and then about a centimeter or two longer than my tray. So when I embed them in the silicone, I have ends of the fabric sticking out on either side that I can connect to with alligator clips when I go to measure the resistance. If the strips are too short, then they're going to be entirely embedded within the silicone and you won't have that access for your electrical measurements. Okay, so four hours later, the silicone should be completely solidified. You want to wear gloves just in case, but it should not be sticky or liquidy at all. It should just be solid, but we're not going to peel it up out of the tray yet. We are going to take a strip of the conductive fabric and lay it down flat in the tray with the two ends sticking up along the sides of the tray. 
It's a little hard for me to reach around the camera to do this, so pardon me for one second. We're going to have it straight across the tray, again with the ends sticking up along the sides, because that's what we are going to clip the alligator clips to later after we remove the entire sheet from the tray. So there we go. You see how I have it flat in the middle with the two ends sticking up along the side walls of the container. Now I'm just doing a single strip for demonstration purposes here. You saw the sheet I had at the beginning of the video had two strips, which allows me to sort of detect where it's being stretched on either side or in the middle where both of the strips are. You can also do a multi-layer process if you want to detect stretch in multiple directions. However, note that this has a third layer of silicone, so you have to make sure these conductive fabric strips are not touching in the middle. You don't want them short-circuited together. So if you want to do this second direction, you're not going to add those yet running this way. You're going to pour a layer of silicone and then add the next strips. But again, it's the same process, just more steps or more strips if you want them. So right now I'm just going to demonstrate it with a single strip. I lay it in the tray. I have pre-mixed my second batch of silicone here. You don't want to do that too far in advance because it will start to solidify. So you could get your strip laid out and then mix the silicone second. And then I am going to very gently and slowly pour this into the tray because I don't want to disturb the strip. If I dump this whole cup in there at once, it's probably going to flow and move the strip around. So I'm just going to pour a little drizzle on top of the strip to hold it into place. And then, again, I'm just going to slowly pour the rest of the silicone in to form another layer about as thick as the first layer. Again, I am not measuring it exactly. I'm just sort of eyeballing it that it's going to be a few millimeters thick. But I want it to be roughly symmetric and about the same thickness as the first layer. So once you have poured that second layer on, same process. You're going to need to wait another four hours for that to cure or solidify completely. And then we'll come back and be able to remove the sheet from the tray. So here we are four hours later. Again, the silicone should be completely solidified and no longer sticky. Wear gloves to test it if you aren't sure. But I am going to just carefully peel this out of the tray, starting in one corner. And I'm going to peel gently. You don't want to tear it out or you could rip the silicone. And you can see I now have a flexible, stretchy sheet with that strip of conductive fabric embedded in the middle. Now you can see in this case, I didn't do a great job making the two layers symmetric. The top layer of silicone is actually a little thinner and the edges of the fabric curled up slightly and are just barely sticking out, which isn't gonna be a big deal for purposes of just doing this for a demonstration. But again, for a real robot, you wouldn't want that exposed conductive fabric sticking up because that could create a short circuit if it bumped into a metal object. So you can always, if you have that problem, just go in and add another layer of silicone. So you would wanna check that before you're moved from the tray. And if you see some of the fabric sticking out, you could add a little more silicone. But for purposes of now going ahead and testing how the resistance changes, this should be okay. So here I have my artificial robotic skin connected to a multimeter set to measure resistance. If you're not sure how to use a multimeter, we have a great tutorial about that. You can find it linked in the description of this video. So I'm not gonna go over all the details here. You can go check out that video if you need to learn how. But we can see that when I'm not stretching the sheet at all, the resistance is somewhere between 90 and 100 ohms. And then when I stretch it, the resistance drops all the way down to around 20 ohms. When I release it, the silicone contracts again and it bounces back up to around 100 ohms. Now, it's probably not going to be exactly the same each time as you stretch on this. It might stretch the fibers in between. Some of the silicone went in between the fibers when it cured. So you might not go back and forth between exactly the same values, but you should kind of go back and forth between the same range you saw around 20 and around 100. So if you would like to define some threshold above or below which you want to activate something like the LEDs you saw earlier in this video, you can kind of use a multimeter to get a rough calibration and then hook it up to a microcontroller and use the stretch or deformation of the skin or sensor to control something. And that, hooking it up to an Arduino to control lights like you saw at the beginning of this video, is going to be a topic for a separate video. So if you just wanted to make the skin and measure the resistance with a multimeter, but not bother with the microcontroller, you're good here. If you want to learn how to hook it up to an Arduino and see the circuit diagram and code and everything for that, make sure you check out the written instructions on our site or the second video, all of which will be linked in the description of this one. 
Finally, for over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out the rest of our YouTube channel and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.